This is PBC TV, your channel for county programs and services. Join us as we celebrate improvements to communities throughout Palm Beach County, including groundbreakings, ribbon cuttings, new services, dedications, and more. This is PBC TV Presents. My name is Maria Sachs, and I'm a friend of Michelle Damon, as we all are here today. We're here today to remember her. Death takes everybody, but it doesn't keep those who are remembered. So as far as I'm concerned, Michelle talked to me all the way here. She, uh, she discussed with me this morning what I was going to wear. <laughs> and she's not easy, as you know. So I'm wearing pink because she told me to. And if you don't like it, take it up with her because uh, I listened to her today. And uh, as I do many, many days. Uh, so we, we are here in this beautiful, beautiful area. Uh, and I'd really like to bring this into my district. It's so pretty. Uh, Melissa, can I do that? Is Melissa McKinley, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so she wanted to, uh, this was part of what Melissa did, uh, is to dedicate this Acreage Pines Natural Area Boardwalk. And I, I know Deb Drum is here, and you've been very instrumental in all of this as well. Um, Kelly Burke has put so much in, uh, into this today's uh, remembrance of Michelle, and I want to thank Kelly. Let's have a little round of applause for Kelly. We had a little music on before, and um, I told him to pump it up because uh, Michelle liked loud music. Uh, she didn't like any quiet symphonies because her life was not a quiet symphony. Uh, she's a badass, and she's my friend, and I'm proud to say that. Uh, the men and the women and the children who are here today uh, know somebody uh, who really made an impact, not just on our lives, but on the lives of everybody in our county, in this area, her family, her friends, and uh, that's the reason we're here today, uh, is because she's with us today. We, uh, yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good because she told me it was going to be good. And that's, and that's so very, very important. Um, we had a really good time together. And uh, I see that when it, uh, we had a very, very good time together. Uh, Michelle and I met uh, in a bar. <laughs> My husband is not here. <laughs> and uh, we kind of hit it off right away. Uh, and we knew that uh, there was a spark between us. And, and I know that that was because I needed her in my campaign for county commission. I needed her for my, uh, for my campaign. I needed her for me uh, to keep me going. Uh, campaigns are tough. Many of you who have been through campaigns know how tough they can be. And uh, she was there next to me all the way through. Uh, and then when we won, and I say we because she was right with me to win, uh, she became my chief of staff in my office. And she ran that office uh, like it was a military campaign, but always uh, with a touch of sweetness. And uh, uh, and that's why we are here today. That's why I'm here today. I don't do funerals. This is not a funeral. This is not. This is a, this is a remembrance of somebody uh, who will live on and on as long as we remember her. And uh, and I know that's the way she would like it. Um, she became my chief of staff, and then as things uh, 
as we progress through the my first year as a county commissioner. Uh, I got to know many of her friends. And interestingly enough, many of her friends had been my friends too. So it was sort of a merging of uh, two strong women, although I like to say that uh, she was always in the lead, always in the lead. And you know, for all the strong women who are here, uh, we, we sort of travel guys, so you understand. I know men like to be a little maybe separate sometimes, but we women, we like to, we like to come together in packs. And uh, she was the leader of our pack, and I trusted her, trusted her. And I loved her, and uh, she was uh, she was a friend in a in a real. Uh, she called herself uh, uh, Wonder Woman. I remember a cartoon that I used to have my daughter see when she was a little girl. I don't know if any of you know about it. It was called She-Ra, and uh, She-Ra was a woman, and she uh, she was a cartoon character, of course. But she used to have the sword. She would raise it up in the air, and she was She-Ra, and to me, that was Michelle, because uh, she did it uh, as a leader of our pack, and uh, and she continues to do so. She's not forgotten. She's still here with us. So um, I would like to welcome, uh, there's so many of you who are here today, and I'd like to recognize a couple of folks. Uh, who's going to follow me is uh, Rolando Barrero, who has arrived and and thank you, Rolando. I know you've been you've been in uh, in some medical issues, and uh, thank you for being here today. Um, I lost also like to recognize Patrick Rutter, who is deputy county administrator and uh, representing the county. And of course, Deb Drum is here, and Lisa De La Ronda, and uh, Elizabeth Acomonando is president of the Indian Trails Improvement District. Drew Rayburn. And the firefighters, our local 29-28, uh, Captain Retired Palm Beach County Fire Rescue, Rich Vassalotti, uh, and of course, uh, Commissioner Melissa McKinley, Sharon Merchant is here, uh, Supervisor of the Indian Trails District, Keith Sordano, uh, from now, Sheila Jaffe, and uh, Alicia Sanders, a representative from this area. But you know, each and every one of you is important here today, regardless of what is listed after your name. Uh, because you are here and you're nobody, this isn't a, an obligatory place to come at, at this hour. Of course, there isn't many places I'd rather be than right here. Uh, you're here because of somebody touched you. And I can tell you right now, she's uh, gonna continue uh, to talk to you, to let you know what she needs, what we all need uh, on behalf of of our people, uh, this area that she loved so much in our county. So at this time, I'd like to welcome to the podium our dear friend, Michelle's dear friend, uh, Rolando Barrero. Come on up, Rolando. <laughs> you walk in, you take it easy now. Good morning, everybody. My name is Rolando Barrero, and and I, I'm, I'm going to say something because I'm proud of it. I'm the president of the Democratic Hispanic Caucus of the state of Florida. And the only way I got there was because of Michelle. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I just got out of the hospital uh, with some back pain. Um, I met her about 10 years ago when I held my first meeting as a community activist. And she walked up to me and she goes, you know, you're going to go places, but you've got to tone it down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for Michelle to tell me to tone it down, <laughs> You can only imagine what that meeting was like. She's like, you you could call people out, but don't point your finger at them. You know, that is not nice. <laughs> um, and she, she built a bench. And for those of you who don't know what that means, is she prepares people for leadership. 
And in that venue, in that mode, we slowly became really good friends. And she introduced me to the women in red. Uh, and we learned to socialize together. And little by slowly, she became family. And I have terminal brain cancer that I've been dealing with since I was 32. During the pandemic, she knew I lived by myself. She went out to every farm, every food bank to make sure that I was fed. She would leave me my food in, on the steps, then call me, on, we'd look through each other through the mirror. Every step of the way of my existence in Palm Beach County, I had her as a guide. I was in her house when my mom passed. Luckily, she was there to comfort me. I watched her struggle with her illness and I empathized with her because I know what it was like. I remember what it was like. I never handled it as good as she did. And she was a warrior. And she was Wonder Woman. She kept it together. It's not to say that we didn't buck heads. We didn't get angry at each other. <laughs> uh, but she did so with grace and always taking the time to call me out and direct me to do the next right thing. It's like, your first thought is generally right, but the way you're going about it may be wrong. <laughs> so sit back and figure out how to best do it. I felt her loss tremendously. Soon after that, my father passed away. I lost the three guiding lights in my life. And I sat there and said, what am I going to do now? And then I remembered that she said, you'll know what to do. Just jump, you know, and up until this day, I'm going to keep jumping and I'm going to keep pausing before I act. Thank God for the direction that she gave me. I've learned to speak a little softer <laughs> and I've learned to get things done. Um, because one thing that Michelle did was get things done. Uh, there was nothing that she put her mind to, set her mind to do that she didn't get done. And I watched her making thousands of phone calls, hundreds of errands, and never forgetting that she had friends and to take a little time off to breathe. That's still my problem. I still got to learn to breathe a little bit. <laughs> and I am so grateful that all of you here to commemorate and celebrate the life of my dear friend, Michelle Dumont. Thank you. <clears throat> Michelle raised her children, Marissa and Matthew, here in the acreage. She started her community involvement with the Moms Club. You know, wherever she is, Michelle's going to get a group going, all right? Then she was with the PTA advocating for keeping this green space. There was a case many years ago when I was in the legislature about a, a girl who was riding her horse in this area. And uh, she got, uh, she got, a horse got hit by a car. The girl did not have a helmet on. And it was Michelle who pushed that state legislation uh, to require children to wear helmets when riding horses. And it was then Governor Charlie Crist, and he, I was here when he uh, signed that legislation in this area. Uh, and to this day, every child, including my own, who get on top of a horse, they are required to wear a helmet. That's because of Michelle Dumont. She was elected to the Indian Trail Improvement District 
in a way, I think that Michelle knew that her time here on Earth was short, and she had to do everything she can, and she did not miss a minute. She did not miss a cause. I'd like to call up Carol Jacobs, who served on the Indian Trail Improvement District with Michelle for over 10 years. Uh, come on up, Carol. Thank you, Maria Sachs. This is a great dedication from the county for um, a great person, Michelle Damone. And as she'll, she's told me many times, you're a terrible speaker, Carol, you know, because she, she could get it across. And when we were in board meetings, I couldn't, I couldn't get my cell and she'd help me out all the time to get it sold. But um, what you're seeing here and throughout the acreage, people that it's a good for the seller and good for the buyer, all these parks, are because of Michelle, and we have what, um, where's the president, about 11 parks now? And Michelle, um, she was on the Moms Club, and she pushed that board of men before they were elected. It was more a proxy type thing. And she uh, got on that board with all men. And she got all these parks, every park here you can thank her. And especially the Coconut Park over there off of North Lake was supposed to be a retention pond. and then County Commission uh, Maslati and her drew on the sand how they were going to make this a walking park with a dock with fishing. And so it is, and it, it's one of the most popular parks, and I'm glad they're redoing the dock right now. And her and I would go, we try to go at least two, three times a week before my legs started hurting me and walk that park, and it was just a joy. And my daughter's now living with me with her two children, and she says, Mom, these parks out here, unbelievable. I've met so many women and my kids have met so many friends and each park is themed differently. And she apparently went through when she was on the board with all these men and picked out parks throughout the acreage and designed them all different. They're all, you know, so when you look at that, and then I remember when this was being dedicated by the county, Michelle wasn't in a very good mood that day. I don't remember what it was. But when we got on that boardwalk and she looked at me and I looked at her and she smiled like, yeah, another win for the acreage. We got another, you know, because it's hard. It's hard for us to get wins out here. But, um, and I remember uh, Mayor Sachs when she came up, we were first and new, I was newly on the board in 2006. And she came over and she says, she wasn't even representing us at all. She goes, if you guys need anything, anything, call my office. So we always made sure every time we went up there, we visit her because she we knew that she was going to help us in some way with whatever came up there. So all I can say is I miss her. I'm old enough. I think I'm her mom's age. She used to give me advice, tell me how to do things, and then vice versa. We were a team, and we fought a lot. We had our fights, but we were... Uh, just the way the acreage is, you can thank Michelle Damone. I love her so much. I'm, I'm surprised I didn't cry. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carol. Thank you so much. And um, now at, at this time, I'd like to uh, ask, uh, I think Matthew is here. Matthew, did you want to say a few words? Uh, this is Michelle's son, Matthew. Come on up, Matthew. Good to see you. Go right ahead. Yes. Nice. Go ahead. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. I, as you can imagine, I'm emotional. Neither did I prepare any speech, but the love of everyone and the peace that we have in this country, I figured would guide me. A lot of my friends and family are here. It's very nice to see them. Rolando, nice to see you, Maria. Thank you for talking. <sighs> Way before things got political, liberal or conservative, Democratic or Republican, my mom was a leader for the battle of good and evil. And as a child, she always taught me to lead <clears throat> and go my own path and protect what is right and fight for what is good. She was always a strong leader in the home, strong leader at the school, strong leader on the board. The works that she did shall follow her even after 
she's gone. She put a lot of considerable work into this uh, this county, all the parks, the roads, the laws. It's so much I can't even uh, fathom how much work she did actually standing here right now. And I'm very grateful to be her son. Um, like I said, I haven't really prepared a speech, but maybe I think I just want everyone here to take 10, 20 seconds of silence and just embrace this perfect, beautiful, sunny day and the birds chirping. And um, please, let's just take 10 seconds of that. I want to hear it. The wind on my face and the memory of my mother. <clears throat> this nation is wonderful. Greatest place on the earth. My mom has taught me that I need to be grateful for it because there are new evils creeping in unto these new times. My mother, Michelle Damone, has taught me to fight with every breath in my power for that good. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for everyone here. I'm grateful for her works. I'm grateful for God who sent his son, Jesus Christ. Whoever believes on him shall never die. He is the light and the life and the resurrection, and I believe those words. Don't really want to get preachy on you guys, but I stand by that forever. So, like I said, I haven't really prepared a speech. I haven't even eaten breakfast, but um, <laughs> everyone here that has come, I'm very grateful. Uh, if I keep talking, I'll just start crying, so. Thanks a lot, okay? Yes, you know. Okay. Andrew Mack. Andrew is Michelle's cousin, and he's going to speak on behalf of the family. Thank you, Andrew. Good morning. Um, I'm Andrew. I'm, I'm Michelle's cousin. Uh, it's uh it's it's a great day um thank you to the county commission the district uh mayor Sachs. thank you um i don't know that this can be a better place to honor michelle um she's done so much for the acreage i mean she's lived more in the acreage than she lived with us in hollywood as if you don't know we all grew up in hollywood um, my sister came in last night and actually brought some photos that michelle had of our family and uh, I was looking at some of those photos of me and Michelle as kids. And, and now I'm there with a fishing pole. Michelle's there with a fishing pole in this picture. And it, it just reminded me how much she cared about people and places and things. And it showed. It showed in her passion for this county and the acreage. And I don't know that it could be more fitting than to honor her by dedicating this boardwalk to her in this park. Um, she fought for a lot of things. But I think she fought for kids and families and, and what was right, like Matt was saying. And... I just wanted to say thank you for honor her today. Uh, it's been a journey. Um, I do miss her a lot. We may not have saw each other every day, but it's it's kind of one of those things when you see her, you're, you're caught up in 10 minutes and, uh, and we miss her a lot. And uh, really thank you everyone from the bottom of our heart for dedicating this boardwalk to her. It means a lot to our family. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is Commissioner Kyle Drexel here? Kyle Drexel? Sir, when you come on up, if you want. You don't have to, yeah? Okay, it's all right. You know, we thought about what we were going to do for Michelle. And what many county commissioners do, as you know, is we name a road after someone. Some people really like to have a road named after them. I don't know why. My road would probably be full of traffic or barrows or something, you know. So. Like, don't ever name a road after me when I'm gone. But then I thought about it, and we were looking at what roads we were going to do. I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I said, gee, problem with a road 
is that it ends somewhere. It ends somewhere. And so I said, let's not, she didn't end. Michelle doesn't end. Um, and, and that's why I'm not crying. Don't get me started because I'm Italian. I'll cry for an hour, you know. <laughs> so what we, what we thought of is a place where uh, she can be remembered as a place as beautiful as this because this is what she helped to create with the help of God and, and, and nature. This is Michelle Devon. It has no end. And uh, we, uh, we, we know that here. I don't have to tell you that. We know that. If there is anybody who would like to say a few words about Michelle, you're welcome to come up. Uh, microphone is yours. Anyone at all. Yes, come on up. Come on. I do. I do remember you, Lisa. Correct. Yeah. Um, good morning. My name is Lisa Trapepi. Um, I'm partners in a firm called Ingenuity Group. We used to be SFRN Inc. Shalloway Foy Raymond and Newell. Um, for those of us from the past, um, we were the district engineers uh, two times here in the acreage. And um, I think I met Michelle when she first ran. She was very young, and Maria, you're absolutely right. She packed so much into her life at such a young age that um, she's made such a tremendous difference in, in the little time she's been on this planet. So, um, so as the engineer, um, you know, we were always behind the scenes feeding information to what to the board to make sure that what they were doing was being done properly. And when people were complaining or, or um, calling in agencies saying that we weren't doing the right thing, um, we were behind the scenes to try to make sure that um, the board was um, doing what they were supposed to do. So this park um, wasn't supposed to happen. There were many people here that did not want this park. And so we did everything we could to make sure that we followed all the jurisdictions. And Michelle made sure that we were doing our job so that she could do her job in giving you in the acreage this beautiful park. And we had people that came and fought against it. And Carol knows all the fights we've had to make the acreage beautiful. This park was a fight. But now look at what we have here and what we've done to enhance the people that live out here. It's tremendous. I mean, she saved a lot of people's lives with the helmet law. We don't know how many lives she saved. It's hard to say how many lives you saved, right? Michelle saved a lot of lives. When there was storms out here, we made sure that intersections were closed where canals intersected roads. People don't know that. Do you know how many lives we probably saved? That was Michelle. Michelle knew about transparency before we all call that word transparency a novel word. She fought for that. She set up press conferences. She wanted everybody out here to understand what we were doing here to try to make everyone have a better quality of life. And I looked up to her. Yeah, I was older too than she. She would tell me what to do. She helped me be a better mom too, on, off to the side, and I'll never forget that. She was such a fighter. We studied the acreage, the amount of wetland areas. She was for the environment to make sure that we didn't destroy any more. But she knew about the past. And we fought for the extension of State Road 7. We fought for it hard. She was a believer. Maybe one day that road should be named after her, that portion of the road. But um, she fought. And all those roads that got shut down during those storms where we got criticized, she saved people because nobody drove into a canal and we no one died. So we owe a lot to Michelle Damone. 
her passion, her love of life, her love of the environment, her strength, her fight for women and women's rights, both sides of the aisle. That was Michelle. And though we all fought with her back and forth, um, at the end of the day, we can laugh and hug and have a drink, right? And celebrate, or two, because that's who Michelle Damone was, or is. And she did speak to me this morning. That's why I have my red on. And so um, I am forever grateful, and I'm just so fortunate that I had the opportunity to work side by side with her um, as we created this beautiful community that you all have today. God bless. Okay, so the takeaway, did you want to say something? Come on up, come on up. So some of you might know me. I'm Shauna Price, Michelle's friend. Um, Shauna Na, which annoyed the shit out of me, but she would come to my house. I have terrazzo floor and it'd scream. Scream at me in a bar, scream at me anywhere that way. That was Michelle, she was tough. Um, I miss her every day. I um, We had our differences a lot at times, but she was. I always knew she was my friend. And she always knew I was her friend to the end. It was hard to watch me um, see her get sick like that and not be the person she was, but she had a little laughter and we all enjoyed our time with her. Um, you know, I'm a business owner and was out here for a long time. Um, I didn't know her here in the acres, although I am from here originally until I um, moved east and we would do silly, we could just do the silliest stuff together, like um, have champagne put it in my bike, ride over to the park in North Palm and just sit there on the beach and just laugh and then realize why was it so hard to ride the bike? Wow, heck, we had flat tires, <laughs> you know, like, and we would just laugh about it and just went to Nashville with her, her grandson, her family, her friends, they were always, she fought for everybody. She cared deeply inside. Sometimes she was just misunderstood. And I would tell her, maybe Michelle, it's your tone. You know, like, you know, the way you do it. Um, it's funny, but we gave each other advice, and I loved her dearly, and um, I talked to her all the time. There's a lot of stuff going on in my life that I wish she was here for, but I know she's around, and, and, and she does silly stuff. I find and things, and but she was a good person down inside, and she was somebody that you you wanted on your side, and even even if she didn't like it, you know, she. She always fought for people and what was right, and, and, and she had a lot of good in herself, and it's um, gone way too soon. And um, So the red dress is because we told her, she all she wanted at the end was, I just want to have another red dress party and drink champagne, and I said, don't worry, Michelle, you're going to have it. Don't worry, you're going to get through this. And truthfully, she, she wouldn't have lived as long as she was, and she didn't have that spirit. That's the thing. I think her spirit's always with me. You know, she's always around me. Um, we're both kind of tough women who get things done and um actually i met her at a bar <laughs> from other friends and uh, then she said hey i'm thinking about moving east like you did and like literally gave up a lot of here to live in a smaller place and different different after our kids grew up and um but she loved people and when she you knew you were loved by her and so we wear the red for her always Kind of a joke, not my favorite color, but she loved the red and the red <laughs> lipstick too. But she looked good, you know. She, was, she just has that spirit, and I think that's what I was saying. Her, her spirit does live on, even though she, you know, we had her. But yeah, I always knew she was my friend. I always knew that she had deep down inside her had so, so much good to give and so much love to give, and she was passionate. And um, I just want to, you know, remember her that way. And I know, I know she's with me every day, so. Happen. So thank you guys all for coming. It's very important. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sheila Jaffe, come on up. Hi, I'm Sheila Jaffe. I'm president of the National Organization for Women. And last year we celebrated our 50th anniversary in um, Palm Beach County. And there's there's two things that um, I never I didn't know about the Moms Club. And a lot of um, our members our moms, not everybody. And um, that the bike helmet issue is really personal to me. Um, I didn't, because I know, um, I don't know if the um, horse helmet came first or whatever, but 
I know when um, my kids started riding bikes, I made sure they wore a helmet. And um, my my daughter Robin said, oh, the kids are teasing me. I said, you wear that helmet. I don't care. And then now it's acceptable. Just the way not smoking in public is not acceptable, you know. And um, my older daughter was riding her bike in New Orleans. And um, she was in her 20s, went over a railroad track, oh. fell over, hit her head with the helmet. The helmet cracked. But she's, she said, Mom, this helmet saved my life. So she's, she, you know, the good things that she did just went on and on. And um, another thing that she did when she joined our chapter and came on the board, um, we were working on a bill and um, called Grayson's Law. And it was um, a little boy who was four years old who was um, murdered because of a family custody issue. And um, she and Jim Bumfiglio went up to Tallahassee. We put together a package to give to, they visited every single legislator and spoke to them personally. And, um, and it was, requires the um, judicial system to take in consideration when there's domestic violence in the family. It didn't pass the first year. Second year went up and tried again. And um, Allie Kessler, um, Grayson's mom went and worked with her and we got past the second year, which is very unusual. And um, we've, we've um, our court watch group is going to be working closer with um, child protections. And Michelle, in some way that we didn't even realize, had some really good um, results from it. So we'll always remember. She went up there and she visited every single legislator and spoke to them about it. And I'm really glad I met the moms club like to find out more about them. So we're really thankful for what she's done. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner <laughs> Melissa McKinley. Former. Former. Still in a recovery from service in public office. But I didn't want to let today go without saying anything. Um, thank you, Mayor Sachs. And also, Kyle, please send our regards to Commissioner Baxter and thank her for helping do this as well. So Michelle started out as my friend. I became a single mother in 2009 and didn't really know how to do it. And uh, I started working for our U.S. Senator out here and met Michelle in that process in what I will only term as a cluster at that time during those conversations. And then I decided, or I thought about running for office, and Michelle went from being my friend to being my critic. Um, and uh, I was so thankful. She, you know, she's like, this isn't going to come easy. I know we've been friends, but don't, don't assume you have my support. And we met at a bar, and we hashed that out right there on Southern at Brew's Room back in the day. <laughs> And uh, after the end of about a three hour conversation and maybe a couple of glasses of wine, uh, she lended her support. And I thought, you know, I never would have been able to win that race. If Michelle had gotten into that race, she would have come out of that primary and been the commissioner and she deserved it. She would have been absolutely wonderful, but she found ways to serve others with uh, outside of Indian Trail Improvement District. But I just, we talked a lot about what she did for parks um, Michelle didn't speak to me today about what to wear, because obviously I didn't wear pink. Um, Michelle's note to me today was just be on time. Um, so my hair is wet, but I was able to travel out all the way out North Lake without hitting a red light or hitting any traffic. And then I thought of her as I went down 140th and hit every little speed table and speed bump. That was Michelle's doing. Uh, I, you know, you, you can't say the words Michelle Damone without saying fire rescue. And so when I look back and I see Rich and I see Drew and I see uh, Captain Graylin, I, I, I think of the phone call I got from her after the horrific car accident where she held the victim in that accident until fire rescue showed up. And she worked, and may he rest in peace as well, with Ron Gerald from Waxahachie Groves and demanded better response times for this community, demanded that three people be returned to every fire rescue uh, truck, every um, ambulance, to make sure that people, in the, the, that people had a better chance of survival because the car accidents in this part of the county, they're not fender benders. They're tragic. They're horrific. 
And if she hadn't worked to improve the response times and to make sure that fire rescue had everything that they needed, we wouldn't have as many children out here able to play on these parks. Um, so public safety, as well as recreational services and things for moms to do with their kids and make sure that the schools were better and that everybody just had access to the services and the safety that they needed. That was Michelle. And I couldn't let today go by without recognizing everything that she did for fire rescue as well. So she's my friend. I miss her. And I can't think of a, a better way to remember her. Um, one of the last things she did was she, after I left office, she came by my house and um, she gave me a set of coffee mugs and they all said, be kind. So thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. I was waiting for you to come yeah, on up, Mr. Well, Bonfilio. Come on up. Come you didn't want to, but come on up. Michelle told you to do yeah, this. Yeah, Michelle told me to do yeah. this. Uh, hi, my name is Jim Bonfiglio. I am the Jim Bonfiglio to whom I think Sheila referred uh, in her conversation about going to uh, Tallahassee and meeting with all the legislature legislators to get that bill passed. Um, so I wanted to get up here and tell you a little story. I met Michelle. Um, during my first run for state house, I am currently a retired pop politician by popular vote. <laughs> we lost we lost those uh, that race in the next one, but we lost the first race by 34 votes. Um, Michelle and I would would knock on doors on a Saturday and a Sunday afternoon. We'd spend five six hours in hot summer. Uh, I wanted to get out, and I think we knocked on about 20 25 thousand doors, but we would always wind up either at and at the end of the afternoon, hot and tired, drinking a beer either at Harry's down in Lake Worth or the Whiskey Bar or the Sail Inn. Uh, we always like to have our extra cocktail. And um, um, the story about Tallahassee, um, and, and uh, we would go there a lot. Um, she hated flying. I said, let's get in the freaking plane and get up there because driving up there is terrible. Um, so we compromised uh, one time we would fly, one time we would drive. Well, I hate that drive to Tallahassee. I don't know if you've ever done it. So we did that trip to Tallahassee to meet with the legislators. Um, and we drove that trip and we were driving back. And I said, I'm not driving down, you know, the turnpike. Let's, uh, let's drive uh, some of the side roads. And, you know, we get tired along the way. We can stop at a bar and just have a drink. And, 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 you know, exactly. So it took us, that, it was what, about a five hour drive? It took about 10 hours to drive <laughs> from Tallahassee. And we stopped at probably a half a dozen bars along the way. And she loved her whiskey. She'd have a whiskey and, and I would have a beer, I'd have a scotch. Um, some of the places were um, um, pretty <laughs> hole in the wall kinds of bars, but, uh, um, that's what Michelle um, loved to do. She, she and I worked the, the, those two campaigns, and we were looking at a third campaign when she discovered um, her illness. And I recall she didn't have insurance. We were at my office, um, and we needed to get her covered. So we did went through the. I said, "Why don't you try Obamacare, man? That's you know." And she didn't think um, she could get coverage. Well, we got her coverage. We got her. Um, uh, the Obamacare plus, I think the uh, you helped her with the um, uh, health care district getting some payments so she could get her, her treatment. And uh, that's what what um, uh, we all did um, for Michelle, because she did so much for us. Um, she helped me in my campaign, both of my campaigns. And uh, um, I'm very grateful. I know she would love this. Uh, and would greatly appreciate uh, the walkway. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, Thank you for being you. here. Come on. Michelle would enjoy this now. The only thing missing is a little champagne. All right? All right. Come on. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Rolando, she told you to tone it down. <laughs> That's amazing. I can't believe that. And the red, amazing on you as well. So, and when, when we, my name is Rich Vassalotti, by the way, retired captain from Fire Rescue. A lot of you guys know me from out here. I saw you guys in the red and I went, 
I knew I should have worn red. I really did, and I don't know what I was thinking. Um, when I've spoken to people in the past about being board members out here and things like this, Elizabeth, you know what you get paid. Wow. Michelle didn't do this for the money. She did this for the love of the community, just like everybody else who's out here, who's so involved with the acreage. They do this for the love of the community. Uh, just the other night, we had a meeting at um, Acreage Pines about the roads out here. And I said, I, I, it, it came to me this morning. I never promoted a battalion chief because I knew that promoting would take me out of here. I remained a captain. I worked at Station 26 for almost 17 years. It was because I love this community. I love these people out here. Michelle and I um, became friends because of roads, because of fire rescue. You were talking about the flooding. I worked at that fire station for almost five days straight, and they said, you're not going home. I didn't want to go home. I wanted to be out here, and I learned a lot that day. Those roads were closed off, and because we had streets that looked like canals and canals that looked like streets, and if you didn't know this area, like some of us do, you would have been in them. Yes, definitely. Um, on a Sunday afternoon, we had a crash at um, 120th and Orange. Nothing serious. Took out the stop sign. Remember, I said on a Sunday, I said, uh, we are not leaving this intersection until we get a stop sign put up here. I know what's going to happen. Who do I call? I call Michelle. Hey, do you know anybody that can get me a stop sign now? She laughed. She said, hold on. An Indian Trails worker pulled up in about eight minutes, and that's not an exaggeration. That was Michelle Damone. Um, the crash by her house, I was there. And it, she, we talked about that a lot. So I saw a side of Michelle that wasn't so tough after that. And I remember pulling up, seeing the carnage, and I saw her. I wish she didn't see that. But on the flip side, there was a reason she saw that. As, a, as our son says, the Lord, the Lord would take you to places for reasons sometimes we don't know. And she was brought to that crash for a reason. And I know she did a lot for the families afterwards on that. And um, that was the person she was. She was absolutely amazing. And, um, and then she did something really crazy along with um, Commissioner McKinley when she took a position with Commissioner Sachs' office. The two of them decided that I'd be a good person to be on the CAC for the Transportation Agency. I was there with James over there. And I do believe State Road 7 one day should be named after Michelle Damone. And she says, don't let them take advantage of you. And you speak your mind. And every meeting, as James knows, and if you ever looked at any of those videos from those meetings, I spoke my mind. But I didn't speak just through me. I spoke through her. And so many times I would hear something about our roads out here, or especially State Road 7, and I can hear Michelle going, don't let that go. Do not let that go. That's baloney. And I didn't, and I would not. So um, we're here because of her love for us, for this community. And um, thank you for listening to me. And all you people who say you don't do good speeches, everybody's speech was fantastic, and I feel like I'm butchering this up. So, But um, <laughs> thank you for for all this. This is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. you know, again, we were going to put a little plaque here at the, at the park, and um, uh, but I looked at it, and I talked to a couple of folks, and I said, there's something missing. And they said, what's that? And I said, it's her picture. It's her picture. So, anybody else want to say anything? We're going to um, you know, this is, uh, this, this is a takeaway. This is a takeaway. The takeaway is this. We've got to listen to Michelle. Cause she's, you know, she's, uh, she's not here physically. But boy, she is talking in my ear every minute now. And I know she's doing the same to you because her voice will not be silenced. Wherever she is, it's amplified. Right, Sharon? So... What we have to know, she's talking to you. What we have to know, right, Rolando, is that uh, we have to listen to her because then she's not, she's not gone. Right? We don't have a long time. Each one of us has a date. You know, you have your first date when you're born. 
and then you have that dash, and then you have the second date. We don't know what that second date is. But we have to know that we have a lot to do yet to fill that dash. A lot to do. She did so much in a short period of time. And uh, we all have a lot to do. And don't worry, she'll tell you about it. Just let her, just listen. As uh, her son said, just listen. And um, as we stand out here, we can hear the birds, we can hear the trees. We can hear the... She's in the wind. Uh, listen to Michelle's voice. And uh, let's get some stuff done. Had no fear. She had no fear. She said, Who's got... what are they going to do to me? <laughs> Put a little Italian. What are they going to do to me, you know? And, uh, and they couldn't. They couldn't stop her. And even death could not silence her. And that's where we all come in here today. So we're going to uh, walk over. Kelly's going to show us where it's at. Going to walk over, going to see the plaque. And uh, we're going to dedicate uh, this area. We're going to dedicate uh, what we're going to do uh, on that dash between those two dates in her memory uh, for our for our state, for our county, but most importantly, for our families and each other. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Acreage Pines Boardwalk. This boardwalk is dedicated to former Indian Trail Improvement District President Michelle Corridis Damon, who served on its board for over 14 years. She was instrumental in bringing the Acreage Park to the Western communities. As a passionate park advocate and influential leader, she helped shape the future of the Acreage. And of course, we have the favorite uh, flowers and birds, but especially we have that one bird. What was that one bird that she loved so much, Matthew? Somebody tell me, what was it? It was the owl. She loved, and, it, and in my office, I've got a picture of the owl uh, in her memory. Because she's, like I said, as long as we continue to work on these issues that she loved, that we love, and are passionate about, Michelle's here. So. One thing I am going to put here is a copy of the law that was uh, passed in Nicole's honor and Nicole's memory for the helmet law uh, for uh, in her memory. And we're going to put that in Boss here as well. And if you have anything else, contact my office. We'll make sure that it happens. This boardwalk is dedicated to former Indian Trails Improvement District President, Michelle Damone, who was instrumental in bringing the Acreage Park to the Western communities. As a passionate park advocate and an influential leader, she helped shape the future of the Acreage. And it has a symbol of the Indian Trails Improvement District and Palm Beach County. Michelle Damone, Acreage Pines Boardwalk in her honor. Thanks for watching PBC TV Presents. For more information on county programs and services, please visit pbcgov.com. This has been a presentation of your Palm Beach County Board of County Commissioners.